A prime responsibility of the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter has been to search out new landing sites for future missions, both to find places that are scientifically interesting on the planet, that have great potential for future discovery once we land there, but also to make sure and to certify that we'll be able to land there safely. Next up is the Mars Science Laboratory to be launched in 2011. It will set down on the planet in 2012. Over three dozen sites have been looked at intensively by the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, and from that, the final landing sites have emerged. In the northern hemisphere of Mars, the Marth Phallus area is important because of the diversity of the mineral signatures that you see. The great channel that cuts across this was carved by water, but even the highlands here were affected by water. In the craters that are there, we see different mineral signatures in the different layers, indicating the episodic activity of water at the planet or the mixing of soils by impacts in the early history of Mars. In the southern hemisphere of Mars, Holden Crater, 60 miles across, is very interesting because there is a channel that goes into the crater, and here you're looking at the front of that, the delta, indicating that water once flowed into the crater, ponding as an inland sea or lake, and then breached the far wall and ran out, leaving layers. In those layers, we expect to find evidence of the past chemistry, the action of water, how long it was there, but it may also have the potential to have preserved biosignatures, that is, evidence of past life, if life had ever developed on the planet and flourished in this area. The outstanding characteristic of Eberswald Crater, the thing that calls out to land in this area, is that it has a delta formation like that of the Mississippi River, in which it's obvious that material has flowed in a channel out of the highlands down into this crater and formed a delta formation, highly structured and layered, meaning that there were many episodes of water flowing into the crater. Those layers could be preserving not only the history of this area as it formed over time in Mars and the activity of water on its surface, but it's the kind of formation that could also preserve evidence of past life if that life had developed on the planet. Gale Crater in the southern hemisphere of Mars near the equator is an attractive landing site because it's a very deep crater, more than three miles deep, and yet at one time it must have been completely filled because its central mound actually extends above the crater rim today. Evident in here are many different kinds of minerals, sulfates, sediments, clay materials that indicated the action of water, and because of that action of water, the possibility that it may have preserved evidence of past life. I'm John Grotzinger, the project scientist for Mars Science Laboratory, the Curiosity rover, and we're going to take Curiosity to our chosen landing site in Gale Crater, which sits at the border between the southern highlands of Mars and the northern lowlands, a really exciting spot because it's very low, and that's the kind of place where water might have pooled and possibly formed lakes. So here we see a different view of Gale Crater that has a different perspective. You can see our landing ellipse down at the bottom there, which is the white circle. And in the middle of Gale Crater is this mountain of rock that is five kilometers high, made layer by layer by layer. But the layers at the bottom are the ones that we're most interested in because we think that those were deposited in an aqueous environment, which is very important for understanding habitability. What you can see here now is that we're about to land very close to the center of the landing ellipse. And we have a couple of different routes that we can take. The scientists on the team prefer the one on the right. And so what we would do is drive along it. And now you can see at the base of this mountain where these lower layers are. And the layers are important because they allow us to sort of read a geological book. You start at the bottom of the mountain, and those are the oldest layers. And then the layers that occur up near the top, those are the youngest parts, the youngest chapters in the book. We will drive along up to this outcrop that we call the fence. And when we get there, we're going to study it. It's a really attractive spot for us because it contains the kind of minerals that formed in water. And then when we're done with that, we're going to go beyond and we're going to enter 
a canyon. And this kind of terrain around here reminds us a lot of Sedona, Arizona. And all the rocks around here are formed in aqueous environments. And so there's a lot of rock, hundreds of meters of it, layer after layer that we can study to tell us about the history of Mars at Gale Crater. Now we cross a boundary and we go into a very different type of rock. You can see how it weathers very differently. It's really rugged. So at that point in the mission, we'll be beyond our initial mission of two Earth years. This will take us into many years afterwards of exploration as we drive around this very rugged terrain. If we make it, we'll be able to look back over the area that we have previously studied, back down in towards the bottom of Gale Crater, back towards our landing ellipse.